Good morning and welcome to Up to the Minute. It is Tuesday, May the 11th. Glad to have you with us. We've got your HCC news and information for the next half hour and some very special guests. You're going to like this show. Stick around. Uh, Frank Cooper is my co-host this morning. And uh, Frank, it's always good to see you every Tuesday and Friday. Well, appreciate it, boss. Man, I'm doing well. How about yourself? Can't complain. Can't complain. Things are going well. It's a little bit humid outside, almost like a sauna when you get out there, but uh, I'm dealing with it. I hear that. I hear that, man. Uh, yeah, summer's slowly approaching, man. So, so get ready for those multiple showers a day with all this humidity. Absolutely. I know. It's one thing we're going to have to get used to in, in uh, during this Houston summer. So, Frank, um, you're returning. And, of course, uh, the reminder is every morning, to make sure you follow us in social media. Absolutely. So we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all major social media platforms. And also for full episodes as well, hit the, no- the notification bell on YouTube, HCC Houston Community College up to the minute for all the latest campus interviews, what's going on around the HCC universe. That's right, Frank. All right. So stick around. Frank is going to be back in a little while. We'll talk maybe a little sports and get to some HCC news and announcements. We're going to continue shining a light on Asian American Pacific Island Heritage Month. And we've got a very special guest, but I want to introduce one guest, former HCC student, Jan Doe. He is a HCC F1 music graduate, a former teacher and a current business owner. Good morning to you, Jan. How are you? Well, you got your mic off there. We can't hear you yet. There we go. Good morning. Good morning, Todd and everyone. Uh, My name is Yando, and uh, I'm very happy to be here on the show with you to share my story. Uh, We're looking forward to hearing your story. Stick around, Jan. We're going to join you in just a few minutes. But at the top of the show, we always have culinary guests from around the city of Houston. And this today, of course, is no exception. We've got Chef Tyson Cole, the chef and owner of Uchi Japanese Restaurant. Good morning to you, Chef. How are you? Fantastic. How are you doing? We're great. We're great. It's always good to, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of sushi. I was talking yesterday on the show. I'm more of a sashimi guy. I love fish. I love the raw fish, the texture of it, and you just can't can't get enough of it. So uh, you, I want to ask you first, because I was reading through my notes before the show, you're from Florida. How does a Florida guy become a sushi chef? Uh, maybe through serendipity, I guess. Um <laughs> I just got a job at a Japanese restaurant and became a sushi chef over time. So it's amazing being from Florida and that happening. You know, I know there's a lot of training and a lot of studying that goes on into it. Years ago, I used to work for a company and one of the uh, parent companies was Miyako. I'm pretty sure you're familiar, a long time um, uh, Houston sushi restaurant. And they talked about the training process they went through for their sushi chefs. Did you go through a long process in learning about the fishes and the cuts and all that stuff? Yeah, I spent about 10 to 12 years working exclusively with Japanese here in Austin, in New York City, and a little bit in Japan. Um, Learned Japanese while I was doing that. Went through the process of becoming a sushi chef. Um, Lots and lots of hours of hard work and training. So it was amazing going through that. I'm very grateful for that. And you started Uchi in the Austin area, is that correct? Yes, sir. In 2003, I should turn 18 here pretty soon, like next week. Awesome. And tell us about, you know, getting started with your own restaurant. I mean, obviously it became very popular and uh, expanding throughout uh, to the Houston area as well. Um, I mean, yeah, it was a leap of faith opening that 03. I had never had a restaurant before, but I wanted to. I had a great partner who was my customer. We found a space, opened it and went from there and found some success and over time decided to expand and open more locations. So obviously went to Houston, which we love Houston a lot. You know, it seems like in Houston, when when I go to sushi restaurants, you know, I like, like I said, I like the sashimi and uh, with maybe a little bit of wasabi, a little bit of soy or something like that. But you see all these very exquisite rolls, the Texas roll, the Hawaii roll, the Eagle roll. Is that like a Texas thing, seeing all these, you know, because to me, it's just way over the top and everybody seems to have their own versions. Um, I think those kind of roles, the Americanized roles, like the California roles started in America. It made it more accessible to people that don't eat sushi to try it, the raw fish. Um, I think people, the great and talented chefs have riffed on that over time to put more and more things in the roll to make it taste better. Um, I think every area has their own rendition. Um, lots of spicy sauces, usually. 
what is some of your most popular things at Uchi and, and what are you going to prepare for us today? Um, well, for you specifically, we have incredible sashimi all the time. Um, this yellowtail, I'm making hamad, hamad chili with it today. Um, we have two menus, a core menu, and the seasonal menu changes every day. So lots of different choices. Um, everything's fresh daily, so that's kind of the idea with Uchi. Um, maybe you can tell, maybe you can get started with what you got going there. Okay, it's called hamad chili. It's a yellowtail sashimi with Thai chilies and oranges. A little bit of fresh garlic. And the idea here is sashimi at Uchi, this specifically too, we're gonna add, we're gonna season the fish where it's not just sashimi by itself. Right. Just add flavor. So this just was a riff on a dish from Nobu that has called called like yellowtail fonzu or whatever they call it, Nobu, but I wanted to take it to another level. So we season the fish with uh, garlic, salt, pepper, and combine it with Fresh citrus oranges, so the fish, a little salt, a little pepper, right, and a little bit of fresh garlic. So we're building flavors, depth of flavors, and then from there, I'm gonna add a little bit of fat to it. This is called ponzi sauce. It's like a soy yeah, vinegar ponzi sauce. Yeah, yeah. On the plate, so you know, the idea here is the fish and the citrus and the ponzu, acid and fat together are delicious. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of garnish and the Thai chili at the end. So does the Gulf, being close to the Gulf of Mexico, does that provide you with a lot of fish that you can use in your dishes uh, that you may not find in Japan or other parts of the country? Have you been able to incorporate local fish you may get out of the Gulf that are unique there? We have some pretty good prepares of biggest fish in the Gulf all the time. Um, most of that we usually cook. I think most of the raw stuff we get is from Japan. Right. right? But we like to have both choices on the table, and that makes it fun. Now, I go into, uh, every time we go to, you mentioned about cooking the fish, because my wife loves to go to sushi restaurants with me, but she doesn't eat raw fish. I'll yeah. eat the sashimi. She likes, you know, the stuff that's cooked. So you offer a little bit of both at Uchi, uh, Uichi to offer your customers, I guess, uh, to, to treat all tastes, correct? That's the idea. So the thing was we want to get people in the restaurant so they were fried a raw fish and have things in the menu that are cooked as well. And so this idea of Uchi is to bring the sushi bar experience to every table. And so you can be customized your meal, eat cooked stuff, raw stuff, whatever you like. We have both. So I think it's really been successful doing that. You work on something called the perfect bite. Maybe you can tell us about the concept behind that. That's my quote, perfect bite. Yeah. So, I mean, sushi itself, you it's a two ounce bite. You saw individually, that's the perfect bite. We ripped off of that to say, can we make every dish in the restaurant have those perfect bites? And so at the tables as well. And so when we're cooking and we're tasting every composed dish, we eat it, we test it, cooks make it. We try to focus on, can we find these perfect bites in every single dish? And that's been the focus the whole time. Well, I mean, you make a good point because when you order pieces of sushi, you may only get one or two bites of them. Um, so you got to make it perfect because you don't want them to walk away having, you know, maybe one out of the 10 items they ordered they didn't like. So that transfers right. over to their whole experience there. There's nowhere to hide in a piece of sushi. Yeah. Are you, tell me what Uchi stands for because uh, it's uh, Japanese for house. Is that correct? House or home. Okay. Um, which is amazing because we came up with the name. Um, the name was already there, and serendipitously, we found a tiny bungalow in Austin, and it was a house, come to find out. So, perfect fit. So, it's called Uchi. You have expanded um, outside of the Houston area. You were in Austin, you're in Houston. Maybe you can tell us about some of the other locations and what you have on tap. Uh, we're also in Denver as well, as about two years ago. And on tap now is in the fall, we're opening, we're opening our smokehouse called Loro there in Houston, in the Heights. And we're open at Uchiko in Houston, off uh, of Post Oak. Um, which is like what, smokehouse. what is that all about? What's that? The Smokehouse. Tell us about that. What is that about? Uh, it's Asian barbecue. It's a partnership between myself and an amazing guy named Aaron Franklin. Um, and we're going to take our first, uh, second location and we're going to go to Houston. 
I'll be Dallas eventually too. So yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Cool. You know, congratulations on everything you've you've been able to accomplish. Uh, wonderful restaurant. Um, and I, like I said, I'm a sashimi lover, and I got to get out there to try that dish you got there. I think you love it. Just eat the oranges and the fish together. I'm all about that, chef. Tyson Cole, for he's the chef and owner of Uchi Japanese Restaurant. Uh, if you're looking for him, folks, we're going to put the link to their restaurant in the social media post for the show. Chef, thanks for being here. Very nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we are going to move on and uh, introduce our guest, former HCC student, Jan Doe. He's a music, music graduate. And Jan, what are you doing nowadays? You're running a couple of businesses? Um, Hi, Todd. Uh, nowadays, I run uh, the Music Family Institute. That um, institute, we um, focus on providing the music lesson and tutoring. That's great. Yes, and also some must camp for students. And right now, we have four locations for, for that business. Uh, and then uh, I also run uh, Saxophone Center that we focus a lot on uh, repairing vintage instruments professional equipment for saxophone player. That's incredible. Congratulations on the businesses. I know it keeps you busy. I want to talk to you as part of uh, Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Um, you're very proud of your Vietnamese heritage. Maybe you can tell us a bit about your story and how you got here to the States. Yes, sir. Uh, for me, I'm very proud about our tradition. Uh, we focus on the family family oriented we focus on everything we do even though business we focus everything for the family we also try to treat the customer as our family member so that's why you see music family the family right. always come with us and then um, how I came here um, you know my dad he worked for American government during the Vietnamese war and after the war, he got in jail for, because he worked for the American government. And then after he uh, get out from the uh, jail, the war jail, uh, he sent all my older siblings go overseas. At that time, I'm too young. Um, so that's why I'm still stay back. And when we have the opportunity, opportunity at, uh, F1 student, then he find a way for me to get here. And in 1997, summer of 1997, uh, I entered the uh, HCC at an F1 student. So you've been, uh, you're a former student from dating back to 1997, and that's when you came to the States. Yes, sir. At that time, at HCC, you know, get about two or three F1 students. Well, let me ask you this. Were you a music student when you were in Vietnam, and or did you just start this when you came over here to the States? Um, in Vietnam, if you want to become a musician, no one, no parent want you to do that. The reason is you are not stable. The income not stable, and most of the time you drink or you do drugs and all that, that's the reputation of the musician. You cannot find a good income for, for the family. So in Vietnam, my dad don't want me to be a musician. My dad, if I were in Vietnam, i become a math teacher. Oh, wow. You wouldn't have been a musician then, huh? <laughs> yes. So when I came here, um, I see the opp opportunity, and I'm very lucky to have the professor Mark Holter at uh, Houston Community College Central Campus. He lead me through all the process. And also my sister is um, a counselor at um, Houston Community College at that time, Tina Do. Right. Yes, she and Mark find a way to convince my dad um, in Vietnam that oh, music is a career that you still have to take the degree. You still have a degree. You still go to uh, apply for the job. You still have the job with the salary. So that's why Mark uh, Holter and uh, Tina Do told me need to go with music education instead of all the music degree. So yeah. that's why I get out from the school, graduate from the school, and I taught for public school for 10 years. And I'm very lucky because during that time, I have full scholarship as a student, F1 student. 
but I have full scholarship to go to school to finish my degree and all of that. And you've had the, as you mentioned, you've had the pleasure of, of working with other students. What do you enjoy the most when you're working with younger students teaching them music? Yes, uh, first of all, you see them grow at a musician, at a human being. And also you see what you earn from the society, you can give back to the next generation. So, so and a lot of time because um, when you go to teach the student, you don't select the student like you pick the ingredient. Yeah. You eat all of them. Anyone come to the pro music program in public school, you teach them. And sometimes you have very smart one, you have the one slow, you have the special ed student. But at the end of the day, what you see is how they grow from what they, they come to you. You see the result of what you put out for the student. So that uh, I'm very enjoyed to work with, with uh, teaching the student. Let me ask you this: When you first arrive in this country, what was the biggest shock that you had? Is there anything you thought, "Wow, this is just crazy"? What's the biggest shock you had when you got here to America? Um, it's a funny story. <clears throat> the first impression when I'm on the airplane, the airplane almost like go go, go down, and I see at because it at night. And I see a lot of moving light. I say, oh, American, the light is moving. Because the car in my country. On the freeway, yeah. Yeah, it's the car on the freeway. But when I get down, then I know, oh, that the car, not the light. <laughs> because in my country, they don't have a lot of car, car lights that. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, and, and our traffic is uh, phenomenal here in Houston. Yeah, Welcome yeah. to Houston traffic. Yes. Um, you said you've got two businesses. You've got the Music Family Institute and also the Saxophone Center. So you're, are you, is it, do you have your family working with you in those businesses or is it just you? Yes, uh, my wife also a, a grad, a graduate from HCC and she go further to um, get her master's degree in curriculum and instruction. She also in the education business. So that's why the Music Family, I run the music part my wife, she run the education. Okay. That's all, all the tutoring and summer school, she, she run all that part. And who runs the business part? Um, we together at the oh, family. good, good. Yes, there sir. we go. <laughs> that keeps it safe for everybody. <laughs> yes, sir. Let me ask you this. If you've got a, a um, some type of tip that you would like to give to people who are just coming to this country because HCC, we have now, I mean, since you've uh, attended here, we now have one of the largest international student bodies. If you could talk to one of those students who were thinking of coming here to the States and attending HCC, what would you tell them? Yes, so I also have my radio talk show about education and music bi-weekly in that, 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 um, our community uh, station. I always suggest the student go to HCC. Go to HCC. The first advantage you have is the, the ratio between teacher and student. It's low. So you have more time if you need any help from teacher. Yeah. It's right there. The teacher right there to help you, ready to help you. That's the first advantage. The second advantage is the tuition is low. It must lower than you go to the other school. Right. HCC have the good rate for, for tuition. And also, the teacher at HCC, they work with many students, like you say, from different countries. So they have the experience, they understand the need of the student. So that's the perfect way to, 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 to go to HCC. And also, when you go to HCC, if your GPA a little bit low, when you transfer to other college or other univers university, they don't count that. They just count you finish the credit. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And also, it's a good place for you to, to grow because they have people come from many different countries. So you can learn from them, a lot from them. 
Incredible. Jan Doe here to help us celebrate AAPI Month. Jan, thanks for joining us this morning. We wish you the best of luck and continued success with your story. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being here. And we're going to have more information on Jan and his businesses on our, on our post after the show is over. All right, Jan, thanks for being here. Thank you. Have a good one. All right, we're going to move on to Frank Cooper with our HCC news and announcements. Frank, I didn't get to ask you um, when we had the sushi chef on from Uchi, are you a sushi fan? I am. I'm, my my knowledge on sushi is very novice at best. I like cooked sushi. Anything yeah, okay, not cooked yeah, kind of freaks me out. Way. We go there. She gets the cooked dishes. I get the raw sushi, the sashimi. But uh, yeah, that's why I like it. It's a lot of these restaurants like Uchi are doing things for customers like yourself who are more not that experimental with, with the raw fish, but like the Japanese style cooking. So it sounds like they got dishes for you, dishes for me, dishes for everybody. Hey, I'm all about inclusion, man, especially all with my right. restaurants. <laughs> all right, Frank, um, you know, one thing we've been doing since this whole shutdown started is our uh, Janet May has been doing our virtual coffee breaks, and that's continuing today. Absolutely. So grab a cup of coffee with, with Janet May, uh, our Chief Human Resources Officer, to continue chatting and adapting to our current reality. That is today at 11 o'clock. Uh, Bob McCracken, he's the risk management uh, specialist here at HCC. So check your email to register or just search Coffee Breaks. Bob McCracken. If you know Bob, he's not only um, the, uh, uh, he's not only with risk management, but he's a comedian too. So he, he's got some good jokes. He can get off the hook every now and then. So make sure you crack a joke with him. All right. Uh, lunch and learn. Frank knows what I'm talking about. Lunch right. and learn. Return to on-site services as more of HCC's uh, support services move back on site. Some may have questions for those who have been working there during this past year. Join a Lunch and Learn panel discussion of faculty and staff. The panel includes Stacy Welcome. She is the Dean of Student Success. Uh, Sean Shadi Kalani, uh, the Faculty Associate Chair of Biology. And Marlon Jimenez, Instructor of Pharmacy Technician. That'll all happen tomorrow, May the 12th at 1130 a.m. So make sure you check your emails and register to attend. Uh, all about engineering. Frank, we've got an engineering academy. It's literally, uh, a lot, well, a lot of it's based in the, the west side, but it's across our district. And you can get some pretty good degrees with partnering universities to them. Absolutely. So everybody knows that HCC, uh, HCC knows that Houston is one of the most largest employers of engineers in the world. So it partners with UT Tyler, Texas A&M Chevron, and the UH HCC Engineering Academy to create careers for engineers at half the cost. That is Wednesday at 8 p.m. on uh, May 12th. So to link, uh, to register, take a link and I'll post after the show. One thing that I always uh, put off to the last minute, but it's a very important PEP deadlines are approaching. It just seems like we've done PEP. Oh, it was last year, but it may seem like yesterday. But the year end review process must have PEP documents with a status acknowledged by the employer no later than June 1st uh, for nine month full time faculty and part time adjunct faculty and June 30th for 10 and a half month full-time faculty, 12 month full-time faculty and full-time staff. So uh, yes, we have to have that done. This is for our faculty and staff. For additional information on the PEP process, visit my HCC's Performance Excellence Program known as PEP. Uh, we will have that link in the post after the show. And it's time for the Instructional Service Awards again, Frank. Nominations are now being accepted for the HCC Instructional Services Award for the following categories. Outstanding Instructional Services Staff, Outstanding Full-Time Faculty, Outstanding Department Chair, and Outstanding Instructional Administrator. Please use the online form at the link we will have in our post and feel free to submit multiple nominations for different employees. You can also nominate yourself. I would, be, I would definitely be doing that, nominating myself that is. Okay, well that's good, good, good. So Frank will be nominating himself. I got news for you. You're, you're not involved with the instructional side here, Frank. <laughs> I have dreams, man, I have dreams. You can try, I, I wish you luck though. 
you know, I'll, I'll vote for you. All right. Friends. Okay. Here's, this is pretty exciting because I don't know if you remember if you were here that day, but uh, St. Arnold's brewery restaurant, they were on the show a few months ago. Um, they've got one of our uh, HCC students working with them. Well, now um, they were on the show in March uh, during the culinary segment, they're looking for cooks and they've asked us to help them uh, find new employees. So if you're a culinary student and you're looking for a J-O-B, this might be right up your alley. Anyone interested can check your uh, check the email in our post after the show and possibly get a gig working for St. Arnold Brewery Restaurant. That uh, sounds like a lot of fun. All right, Frank, as always, we've been talking registration and really the main thing people need to know is we've got five learning options, some of them online, some of them hybrid, and some of them in person. Absolutely. And uh, starting this summer, we will have face-to-face -face small interactions and in classes. So it'll be small classes for uh, for social distancing and as well as summer, summer and fall registration you can do right now. Yes, fall right now. So the sooner you can register for fall, uh, fall semester, the better chances you can get in those classes and the better chances that you can graduate on time as well. So for more information about that and our five modalities, uh, go to accs.edu forward slash now. All right, so, uh, okay, so we were talking at the top of the show, but we always maybe talk a little sports, and the Astros, um, yeah, they're winning. They're playing the Angels, and, you know, they can't play them every game, uh, but I guess you got to win those games that you can. Absolutely. I mean, it's been a weird season with baseball. Like, I was looking at the standings this morning, and, like, Everybody, like all 30 teams are hovering around 500. It's it's yeah. the weirdest thing. I, I don't know if, you know, spring training, lack like of spring training and COVID is, 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 taking, is taking the issue right now. But it's been very few teams separating the pack. But um, I was looking at the Astros' uh, last 10 games, and they're 5-5 five and five in the last 10 games. Like, I know. they yeah. are literally yeah. 500 the last 10 place. games. Yeah, they're like two games out of first place. So they're not not that far behind. No, no, they're not. No, they're not. I think the A's are 21 and 15. So, yeah, if they play Angels seven more times in the next two weeks, they'll be in first place. And the Rockets, hey, they're they're zeroing in on that first pick in the draft. They are. And you know what? It's The Rockets are in a, in a very special position right now. Yes, they're not, they're not very good right now, but they're playing a lot of their young players. Yeah. And I think, I think the great thing is about being bad – I'm this is me, Mr. Silverlining right now, is that you have young players that, that you can develop, that you can give this, you know, all this playing time to. And then come next season, when you when you do uh bring free agents in and you have hopefully a top three pick, hopefully the, the top pick of the draft, whether it's Kay Cunningham or Jalen Suggs, you can yeah. take those players that you saw this year and add it to the mix for the roster next year. Yeah, and you know, when the uh, there were kind of, you know, when James Harden was around. It was kind of like when they used to have Tracy McGrady and Yao Ming. You knew they they weren't going to win. You knew they had to go. And it was like pulling a scab off. You just got to do it, you know. And then the same with with uh, with uh, James Harden. You knew he's he's had his shot with the Rockets. Maybe it just wasn't going to happen here. And they had to just let him go and move on. It was going to be painful, and it has been. But I really think they're in the position to turn this thing around fairly quickly because in the nba you get a couple of good players and hey you're in the playoffs next year absolutely i mean perfect example look at the suns yeah. two years ago the suns had one of the worst workers in basketball they're the number one seed right now with david yeah. burger and chris and and with the trade acquisition of chris paul over the offseason they went from not making the playoffs in the bubble last year to not being the number one seed so it just takes the right the right free agent signings the right draft um, getting that, getting that, getting that, getting a, a good player that, that you're scouting, and, and before you know it, you could be in the top three next year in, in the Western Conference. Yeah, well, football, totally different thing. And of course, the Texans, God bless them. You know, um, I mean, I saw this meme on Facebook, and it just kind of summed it all up. It had a picture of J.J. Watt, uh, Deshaun, and D. Hop, and uh, they were all standing there, and it said the Texans in 2019. And then the Texans now, it's got this poor kid who's just been drafted in the third round as a quarterback, you know, behind center. Texans yeah. in 2021. That just sums it up right there. Yeah, it doesn't It doesn't look good. It, it, it's hard. It's just, it's hard to put, put together a good team when you don't have any draft picks and you don't have 
set a cap room. Give them um, away. You know, you give them away for a, a bucket of, you know, um, paint and maybe a hamburger. You know, yeah. so, I mean, it's it's really sad. You know, D-Hop, they didn't get anything out of that. But, hey, they're the Texans. That's why they are the Texans. And that's why in the last 20 years they haven't won a championship <laughs> or uh, made it to, yeah, they made it to the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nope championship that didn't happen all right, right frank so there you go um Wait, that's real, real quick i want to give a shout out to russell westbrook he broke the triple double record yesterday oh wow with his 182nd triple double passing oscar robinson all time that's one of the few sports records i never thought would be broken but he 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 he, he, he had been averaging triple double to like the, three of the last four years in the nba which is insane and like yeah. unheard of so shout out to russell westbrook Absolutely. All right. So we'll talk some more sports on Friday when Frank is back. Frank, we'll see you on Friday, right? Absolutely. All right. Tomorrow, we're going to be featuring uh, the first graduating class of the H the Honors College of HCC Southeast. And later on this week, it's Virtual Family Fun Day. On Thursday, we'll visit with the George Observatory. Frank, we'll see you Friday. We'll see all of you tomorrow live, 10 a.m. on Up to the Minute.